What up, y'all? Welcome to Nate's Garage and Bakery. We are going to wire this thing, and we're actually nearly done. It's as if I knew how many parts to this video series there were going to be now. Ain't that grand. So we're going to just basically watch me goof around with a bunch of wires here in this video. There's a couple tech tips and a couple pro tips here and there as far as wiring goes in general. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We are to the point where we are going to run wires to the control board, which we see here in front of me. Um, I thought this would be the easiest way to do this was the little head mount for the camera. We've got lots well, of connections on it. The instructions basically tell you exactly where everything needs to go. Now the instructions I have seem to have two diagrams one for this model and there's apparently another model of the same instruction booklets for this is going to be our friend here a little bit this little crappy screwdriver um, i've got my own here if this one fails me let's start with well let's start with the power supply since that's going to be our main source of power i believe that's what they give us this for is to wire the power supply up to this board. I'm going to start over here at this board since this is where I am anyway. Uh, they give you diagonal cuts. So yeah, you can strip wire with diagonal cuts. Uh, so we'll make the black obviously is a negative and the, uh, yeah, the red will be the positive of our 12 volts and uh, I'm going to strip maybe was it a quarter or three-eighths of an inch off of there quite familiar with these little green connectors on here it's uh, what we use a lot of in the world of where I work this is why I don't like using dikes for wire stripping because they are not <coughs> that good at it that's not what they are made for. So, here we go. Now, if I want to get fancy, I can solder those or put wire ferrules on them. I'm just going to leave them like they are. The power supply goes into XS1. I don't know if the camera will make this out, but we've got, uh, from my viewpoint here, the plus on the right and the minus on the left. Now, if you strip them too long, you get a lot of exposed wire, which I don't like to have and I stripped them too long so I am going to chop this off a little bit like this like this so now stick them in there you see how they're nice and flush now apparently these little cage clamp things uh, will often come this way. They are already clamped all the way down, so what you want to do is make sure that you unclamp them. Undo the cage clamps first, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go through and do all these, since I'm here thinking about it, because it's a pain in the ass to have wires ready to go, and then realize that your junk is all tightened down already. So there we go, our plus and minus. Get that in there. The other part of this is going to be how do you want to route your wires? I don't know how much they tell you in the manual. I haven't looked that far ahead. Even regarding what they tell you, I'm going to do mine the way I want to do mine. So, I mean, there's obviously plenty of room behind here to feed wires. So you can do that if you want, which I will probably end up doing. And then the other nice thing about this, uh, this, uh, this type of rail, this aluminum extruded rail, is that there's slots in there that you can actually feed your wires. Kind of clean everything up. Kind of a byproduct of uh, the kind of frame that I wanted. It certainly wasn't that reason that I wanted this, but it does work nice. 
So if I get this all fed down in there and voila, we've got a power connection hidden behind the board. Isn't that nice? And then what I'll probably do is um, jam it into the rail here and we won't be able to go across and get real fancy and go through this channel uh, because there are some T-nuts in the way from other things we've attached. So we won't be able to do that, but what we could do is come around the back here. Come around the back. Now that's a pretty sharp edge there to be having some wire, especially power wire, rested up on. Some lightning show going on out here. So, uh, yeah, um, we might get fancier with that later, but uh, for right now, I'm just going to run that here. Yeah, baby. I like me a thunderstorm. Uh, for now, I'm just going to run that right there. Um, yeah. We also have a whole bunch of sensors to run. Um, so we've got this one underneath here from the Y-axis. We've got this one up here from the X-axis. And on this particular one, you either have a Z-axis limit switch, which I think is mounted down here normally, or you have the one I have with the auto bed leveling, which is this proximity sensor back here. Either way, that is the Z limit switch. And uh, those will all be terminated with a little three-prong plug like so. And uh, this, I mean, the uh, circuit board here is all marked very nicely. X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus, Z plus, Z minus. All of our limit switches are going to be X uh, or, or minus connections. We're going to leave the pluses empty. And we're going to connect up to the minus uh, terminals here. We've got our control panel up top. Our LCD display. Uh... I have labeled them one and two here already. I just markered right on the cable there. They are labeled where they're plugged in. It says EXP1 and EXP2. That will match up down here. You can see around the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, around the bottom side of these two connectors, on the on the black connectors here at the bottom, we've got EXP1 and EXP2. So that's where those will go. Uh, so basically we're going to run a bunch of wires. Um, some of them you're going to have to strip the stuff that doesn't have connectors on them. Uh, like the nozzle heat and uh, what else is on here? And the fans and all that, you're going to have to strip off the wire and actually plug them in somewhere. Uh, for that matter, I believe one of these fans has to be plugged into the same spot as the... Uh, as the main power supply, so basically it's just on all the time. And I think the other one's only on certain times. I'm going to make a couple notes. Um, the instructions really don't go into a whole lot of detail about how to route these wires from one place to another on the thing there. So it's kind of up to you how creative you want to get. Um, I'm going to just dick around with a whole bunch of it and uh, see how I can get it to work. Uh, so, a couple of things here. First of all, this bundle of motor wires. These are all motor wires with the uh, red, green, blue, and black sets. There's uh, several different things about these. First of all, there's two sets of the shortest ones. These are what are going to go to your uh, X-axis motor and Y-axis motor. So those will go just uh, the shortest travel from the board to the X and the board to the Y. There is a long cable. And this long sucker is going to go up to your print head because it has to go all the way to the top. And then it has to loop down to the bottom and have enough play in it for, this, uh, for the X axis to go across that way. And then there is yet another one that has three connectors on it, like so, and um, what you're going to do is this, you'll notice that uh, two of the connectors have five, six pins and one of the connectors has four pins, so basically 
the four pin connector is going to go into the uh, Z axis plug on here, uh, wherever that is, and the shortest run will go straight to this motor right here next to the control board, and the longest run will run across to the other Z axis control motor, since those are both run off of the same output. This has been a pain in the butt, to say the least. Um, probably because I'm a little bit picky about my wiring. Uh, so, uh, since the last we've met, I went some Amazon shopping. Well, first of all, we've got the, the good old blue uh, masking tape here for the bed to supplement the china wrap that came with the thing. Secondly, uh, in messing with this wiring routing around this particular frame with the little channels that'll, that are built into the uh, frame here that I'm going to run the wire through, um, I decided to get some sticky tack or tack and stick to uh, keep the crap in the channels. So I'll, you know, run the wire through there and smoosh a piece of this junk in there every so often and that should keep the wires in place. We'll see if that works very well or not, but that's my idea. Thirdly, since I decided to route this wire from the print head, the hot end, uh, the way I did, which is to kind of squirrel it around the bottom side of the thing here and through the back end of this bracket for the proximity sensor. So basically I've already used that much wire just getting to this point from these fans and from the extruder motor and all that. Uh, I've already used quite a bit of length of wire and then I squirreled it up here and that should allow me to have the full range all the way up and all the way down without this getting in the way. I'm sure there's other ways to do that that hang out in the front or something. I don't know. I just, like I said, I got picky with my wiring. So uh, in order to do that, I came up short on things like my motor lead for the extruder. Came up short on that. See if I route it around the frame like I want to here, that's not going to reach down here on the circuit board where it needs to reach. So I went and uh, got me, there's a couple of different options here. What I did was the uh, easy but much more expensive route, I guess you could say, and I got this little thing here. It's uh, from 3DRC Parts, 12 inch, 22 gauge silicone battery balance lead extension. Comes complete with connectors and everything. And since uh, since these motor leads, you know, the, the, the side that you plug into the motor is six pins, but the side that you plug into the board is four pins so I am uh, I'm extending the four pin side of that welcome to this moment of wiring know-how the uh, AC input cord that comes with this is in the standard European colors which is brown blue and green as opposed to the US standard colors and I don't know where all these are done, but at least in Europe it's brown, blue, green, and in the U.S. it's usually black, white, green for hot, neutral, and ground. The way I usually remember this, and uh, I come from a background of messing around with a lot of things, including car stereos. Anytime you get a car, and I started out with Japanese cars, so Japanese cars, red or yellow was always power, and black was always ground. Now, if you're talking about the U.S. standard colors of power wiring, black where it was ground in the car is now the hot side on AC. This is how I remember that. Don't ask me how. That is a helpful reminder to me, but that's how I remember it. If it was ground in the car, it's hot on AC. Same difference. Uh, eventually, I got myself a German car and a Swedish car and some other European cars I had here and there. The wiring is, I forget what actual power is, I think it's usually blue maybe, I don't know. And uh, brown is always the ground wire. Same thing with the European AC side of thing. 
brown is going to be your line or hot side and blue is going to be your neutral side so that's how i remember things whatever it was in the car it's reverse on ac that's how i remember it the more you know welcome to this wiring tech tip so i need to extend these fan power wires these little uh uh, 24 gauge maybe uh, power wires uh, one for each set of fans uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to splice in a wire to make it longer now what I have here is some what else speaker wire uh, where is the print there it is speaker cable 18 gauge and the way this stuff comes uh, this particular kind it's got four leads in it so what i will do is keep one of these fans red black like it is already and keep one of them white green and that way i'll be able to tell which one's which after i ohm it back out because i lost track of which wires are which here first things first uh ever since i was in school and they gave me one of these and as part of my kit this type of wire stripper i uh i tend to like these quite a bit uh, especially this kind here where you set the gauge that you're going to strip with this little dial that's on here. Uh, so for instance I've got 18 gauge speaker wire, I set it to that, that keeps it from going any further. And then I can sit here all day and strip 18 gauge wire. You know, assuming that the actual stuff comes off alright, without, uh, without cutting through the cable. So. I tend to like these better than, uh, for instance, uh, the kind that I don't have in front of me right now. Especially like them when I don't have the other kind with me. So, boom. And then let's say I need to move into a different size of wire and strip it out. So, uh, I just uh, change the dial here to uh, 22s. Rolling on 22s now. And now I can strip 22 inch or 22 gauge all day long. Now, why am I stripping five feet a damn cable off the end of these things? These happen to be tin tipped from the factory, but uh, why so long? Well, because the best way to lengthen a wire like this. So let's say, uh, actually, I guess I don't know which black wire goes with which red wire anymore. Whatever. Okay, so let's say this red wire here, what you're going to do is you're going to make a hook. So basically, you're going to do, since this is the thicker wire, let's do this. Make the hook there with the wire. Make a hook with the other side of the wire. You're going to make sure that there's a long enough tail. Maybe I didn't strip these long enough, but I think it'll probably work all right. And you're going to hook them like this. Hook. And then you're going to squeeze them hooks. And then you're going to start wrapping the tails around the other side of the wire. What I'm going to end up doing is, now that these are together, I will solder these. And therefore, I won't have, uh, yeah. And what that also does is, uh, you clip these leads off here, that should more or less make it the same diameter as the wires that you're connecting together, so you don't have this big glob of crap in the middle here that you're trying to solder together or tape together or whatever you're going to do with it. So uh, that's how you do it. Just, uh, you know, it makes it that easy. Now, there's ways to do that so you won't, don't have to solder it, but that, you know, you strip a whole bunch more back there and you make sure it's wound around tight and all that. It's uh, some kind of fisherman splice, something or another. I don't know. Whatever. So there's your wiring tech tip uh, from Nate's Garage and Bakery. You're welcome. Well, that's it for this episode on Nate's Garage and Bakery. Did you get this far? Did you like what you saw? Go ahead on and click that subscribe button for future videos. Hell, click the like button while you're at it. Leave a comment if you got questions, I'll try to answer them. Later.